All right, what's going on guys? This is Mlork5 and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be giving you guys my wishes for Breath of the Wild 2. Literally my ultimate wish list. It's not everything, everything. And I would expect everything to be in this game. It's basically as though someone came up to me and said, tell me everything you want off the top of your head in Breath of the Wild 2 and tell me why. And that's what this video is because there's a lot of stuff. Let's get right into it, bro. So the first thing that I would start off with is craftable weapons. Now, if you haven't noticed, a lot of Breath of the Wild's weapons looks as though they've been made using certain objects in the overworld. I think it would be cool if there were a specific set of exclusive weapons that were locked behind crafting your own weapons, or you can be able to craft already existing weapons that are found throughout the overworld. This is certainly the case with the dragon bow weapons, which looks as though they've been made out of tree bark, some red string, and literally cut out pieces of dragon bones or the bones of the leviathans that can be found throughout the overworld but it's very interesting and it isn't just with the boko weapons but i mean it really shows in the boko weapons now i'm not saying that this should be on any sort of scale to that of like minecraft or terraria or anything like that but i do think that having this feature would sort of give each individual a unique gameplay experience it would also put a lot of the items that we find in Breath of the Wild that we don't really use a lot into good use. And then if we do have this feature, you're wondering, what's the point? Maybe being able to craft your own weapons opens the doorway to put your own abilities or perks on those weapons. For instance, durability, uh, critical hit, long throw, and Age of Calamity actually added a whole bunch of new weapon perks. So maybe we will see something like this in the new game. This actually brings me right into my next idea, which is having a blacksmith in the game. Now we've seen one in Age of Calamity, and although I think it should do different things in Breath of the Wild 2, I do think that they should make a return, all right? Now, a lot of people were complaining about the durability system, although I think it's okay. You know, that's just not the case with a lot of people. So maybe if we were able to bring some of our weapons to a blacksmith and in turn, they can repair some of the weapons in the game that are low on durability, I think that would be, you know, cool. But I think it more so plays into the idea of having a Hyrule that feels more alive, you know, but we'll get into that later. Now my next idea is different outfits and lots of them. I really think Breath of the Wild has a lot of potential in this area. It also plays into the idea that everybody's game experience is going to be individualized and unique from one another making it all the more special. This ask is pretty low on my list, but it would be pretty cool to see regardless. And maybe these custom outfits or shirts or trousers or vests that you can buy have no specific gear abilities and aren't able to be upgraded. Therefore, the armor and gear that you get by playing the game still have a purpose. Another Age of Calamity inspired idea is notoriety. Maybe if you help out people within a certain region, then you get certain perks when you're visiting that region. Whether it be discounts at certain stores or actually allowing me to wear whatever the f I want in Gerudo Town. I mean, how disrespectful of these sexist mother I saved your town and you won't even let me in the village without dressing up as a female? Now, my next ask is that we get specific and exclusive items in certain shops. Now, I'm not asking for a specific set of items that can already be found in the overworld. The only thing in a specific shop, I mean, because they already do that in Breath of the Wild, and frankly, there's no point in doing so. I think that if we had specific items that are only found in certain shops or vendors, and then the trip to that specific shop or vendor would be worthwhile. Because once you get to a certain point, it's like, Either I'm gonna find this in the overworld or I'm just gonna outright buy it and then you don't have any more in stock for two days or whatever. <clears throat> Anyways, now another thing is that I don't think anybody should be able to buy everything in your inventory because it's just not realistic. Maybe some characters are only able to buy up to a certain amount or certain people only accept certain items. And maybe the late game is reserved for people 
who actually can buy out everything that you have. Uh, so now let's talk about bosses, all right? Now these are just overall bosses and not like actual mini bosses like the Blights or anything. I don't have any ideas in that department. All I know is that they can do better than Blights this time around. But anyways, let's talk about dragons, man. I mean, I think that we should be able to fight dragons or ride them or do something with them other than just shooting their scales and whatnot. I mean, the fight that we had with Nadra was really cool and was a pleasant surprise. And that's another thing. I mean, more things like quests and whatnot should have those moments, you know, that you're just genuinely surprised and you're rewarded for going out of your way and exploring. Now, back to bosses, I think that we should have some sort of winged creature as a boss, definitely, and especially with the Skyward Sword sort of theme of the game with the skies and whatnot. I think winged creatures are definitely going to be a given in this game. Also, something with the underwater or something with water. Maybe a boss that sits at the surface of the water or that can completely submerge underwater. A sand boss, I mean, I love the Maldugra, but I think that, you know, we can do a lot more with the Maldugra this time around. A volcanic boss, you know, a boss that sits in lava or in the center of the volcano. And last but not least, a snow boss, a boss that, you know, can do something with the snow. I mean, that would be pretty cool. The next thing is dungeons, okay? And if you guys really want dungeons in Breath of the Wild 2, then I'm gonna let you know right now, y'all are tripping, okay? Shrines slash divine beasts are much better than dungeons, and I feel like people who think otherwise are basing their ideals off of nostalgia, which is okay, but like playing Skyward Sword, playing Twilight Princess again, I mean, just two completely different experiences than playing like a more hashed out, more modernized, just a better design puzzle piece, you know? Now, if you wanted the dungeons to be harder or more intricate or just having a different design or um, aesthetic while being underground or like more natural, then that that's completely fine. But dungeons, dungeons, like how we saw in all the other Zelda games, no, please no. But I do admit that you know, the Divine Beast could have been a little more, you know, expansive. And maybe if we had a different setting, like underground or in a temple, you know, that would work. Now, this is the part that you've all been waiting for, okay? Now, I think that we can all agree that the most annoying part of Breath of the Wild is that we have this expansive world that lets us do just about anything. Climb anywhere, we could fly up into the sky, but... Whenever we touch water, we stay on the surface. There was absolutely no underwater gameplay. Now, there was some underwater gameplay in Twilight Princess, okay? But other than that, we've never really seen underwater gameplay in a Zelda game. And it's always just been on the surface swimming. So I think that Breath of the Wild 2 has the time, especially with the world already being built, I think that they have the time to implement underwater exploration. And I also think that it's about time that they do so. And so obviously, if and when we do get underwater traversal, it's not just gonna be, oh, look at these coral reefs that we put in the game, how cool. Oh yeah, look, you can catch fish. It's gonna be a little harder though. Like, no, they are gonna do something with underwater because that's a huge gameplay mechanic right so what exactly would they do well automatically comes to mind for me is something with the zora right i mean you're gonna have so many different side quests or challenges and you're probably gonna be able to see a bunch of zora swimming underwater but not only that it opens the doorway to new animals new wildlife right new monsters and then definitely some new sub bosses or even an entire boss that would be awesome it's definitely one of the most wanted things in breath of the wild 2 thus far just based on the community right and it's definitely up there in terms of my asks but another thing that's also up there are cutscenes. breath of the wild story did its job you know it fit its purpose but that's really all it did and for a game 
to Breath of the Wild's caliber, you know, I really think that it needs a good story to coincide with it. So Age of Calamity did a great job with their cutscenes and their storytelling, although the story content wasn't really there. Breath of the Wild story content was there, but the storytelling wasn't. So we just need a mix of both. And I think one of the ways that this can be accomplished is through cutscenes. So in Breath of the Wild, we saw cutscenes after cutscene after cutscene, but they were in the form of memories, which is why, you know, this new game is taking place in the present. I'm not worried about the past, the memories, cutscenes, whatever. But there were certain things in Breath of the Wild's present that could have and should have been cutscenes, which would have made the story 10 times more impactful. Unfortunately, Nintendo opted for walls and walls and walls of texts mixed with the occasional gasps, grunts, and moans of the NPC who was talking to you. Let's take this for an example. There was so much emotion and I mean, it was also pretty well scripted, but the player more likely than not is just gonna skip through this on some let me play the game kind of stuff because it's just walls and walls and walls of text, like I said. Not only are cutscenes more immersive than mountains of text appearing on my screen, if I choose to skip an entire cutscene, I know that I'm cheating myself out of an experience. I'm missing out on something. The only thing I'm missing out on if I skip walls of text is self-administration of my literacy skills. The lack of cutscenes isn't as much of a problem as where they are placed. The entire beginning segment where King Rome was dressed as the old man and was telling you all about shrines, that should have been a cutscene. His dialogue was well scripted and shrines were very important to that game. And I also think every side quest or shrine quest should have some sort of cinematic segment. Not an entire cutscene, you know, approaching the characters that give you the side quests does not have to be an entire cutscene. That's not what I'm saying. Also, it's things like going up to a shopkeeper or a vendor, that does not have to be a cutscene. But I mean, segments of, let's say, remember when you had to clear out the beach for the 10 things of goat milk? I mean, when we approached the beach, I think I would have felt as though the mission would have been more memorable if I just got maybe five to 10 seconds of cinematic shots of the monsters terrorizing the beach. You know what I'm saying? Now, another thing that I would love to see in Breath of the Wild 2 is to be able to change your difficulty, right? And not having it locked behind a DLC. Now, it was this leak and, you know, it's probably fake because it's a leak. But nevertheless, it detailed how Breath of the Wild 2 would have an easy mode, a normal mode, and a hard mode. Now, I think easy mode would just be like the same difficulty as Breath of the Wild because it wasn't particularly difficult. You know, you had some bosses here and there, some enemies, but as long as you are well prepared, the game isn't that difficult. Normal mode, I don't think that we should have like an entire tier up just yet. I feel like on normal mode, you know, guardians might be able to fake you out like they do in master mode. I think that there should be a limit on how much you can eat and heal up during a fight. And we'll get into that later, but I think that should be included in the normal mode. And then hard mode, you know, all enemies are a tier upwards. Enemies can detect you more easily. And then, of course, you can't heal up during a fight or anything like that. Now, here's an interesting one that I don't think anybody else has thought of yet. And that is different combat animations. What do I mean by that? Well, you know how there's the basic four swings with a one-handed weapon, the same animation for every spear, and the same animation for every long-handed weapon. I feel like different kinds of the same weapon should have different combat animations, you know? Like a Gerudo Scimitar would have a different animation than a Royal Broadsword. And I know that Link is the shit and everything. He's been able to take down grown men since the age of four. You know, if you're into that Link Breath of the Wild lore, you know what I'm saying? You would know that. But Age of Calamity proved that no matter how good you are, you can still learn off of others. And being able to train with someone to unlock new combos would be an interesting feature, you know, keep gameplay fresh. I also want to be able to move around seamlessly. And I mean, when we're comparing this game to a game like maybe Red Dead Redemption 2 or Horizon Zero Dawn, you know, Link does move around pretty seamlessly. But there are those instances in combat where you're like, can I hurry up in flurry rush? You know, I want to also be able to front flip, you know, and the fact that they are going to be upgrading diving and paragliding, I really think that this is a strong likelihood. 
Now we're gonna get into the wild life. Now, when you wanna just escape from it all and roam and explore, what are you left with? The wild, I mean, the game is literally called Breath of the Wild, so let's make the wild life a little more profound in this next game. I'm gonna start by listing off animals that could realistically appear in Breath of the Wild's Hyrule. Because you know, there's some animals that are just out of place. But anyways, let's start off with the realistic ones and then we'll get into the more extreme. Tigers in the Faerun region, camels in the Gerudo, elephants or mammoths in the Hebra, coyotes, and I'm not talking about a wolf reskin, polar bears in the Hebra regions or Gerudo highlands, crocodiles in the Faron region, jaguars in the Faron region, monkeys and parrots. I'm pretty sure that those two are actually going to be in Breath of the Wild 2 given the fact that we hear them in Faron but we just don't see them. Iguanas, snow leopards, and vultures could even be realistically in the game. We also unofficially see mice, and we have officially seen mice in Breath of the Wild 2 trailers, so I'm wondering if they'll make an appearance. Also, we can hear owls, but we don't see any owls in Hyrule. Now here's a list of some of the more outlandish or unrealistic animals to appear in Breath of the Wild's Hyrule. Snakes, hyenas, hippos, eagles, and caiman. Here is a subset of wildlife that I think if we get underwater gameplay that we will see in Breath of the Wild 2. Obviously turtles, sharks, dolphins, and I've heard the idea of being able to ride dolphins and we'll get into that in a second. Eels, deep water fish, jellyfish. I mean, these can all be different wildlifes that are found under the water and maybe even crocodiles and caiman, how we mentioned earlier, can travel underwater as well as Link. Now, to be completely honest, I was shocked with the lack of animal AI that we see in Breath of the Wild. Now, during my first few hours of playtime in the Great Plateau, I saw a group of bokoblins chasing around and attempting to kill a poor boar that was just running in the area. And I was like, yeah, I like that. I expected to see more animal encounters just like that, but a little more diversified when I was playing the entire game. But I came to the upsetting realization that most of these animals just exist. They're there for you to get materials, run away from you if you get too close to them, and disappear a few seconds afterwards. I'm like, what the hell? What is going on? I mean, there's literally a bear in the game that is named after honey because it eats honey and it drops honey sometimes when you kill it. But do I ever see it agitating a beehive? No. Have I ever seen a pack of wolves hunt anything? No, it can literally be within two feet of a boar or a goat and literally they won't do anything. And then there are those animals that literally have no reason to be in the game, such as the moose, the rhino, the water buffalo, the islander hawk, the Hatino cow. I mean, it was just extremely disappointing. An easy fix for this would be to have every species have their own nuance. You know, maybe wolves hunt other animals. Maybe rhinos sharpen their horns on trees or fight other rhinos for territory. Maybe lionels would be able to fight mammoths in this game. I feel like every species of animal needs two nuances whether it be, you know, something funny, something cute, or it'll involve an interaction between another kind of the same species or another monster in the overworld. I mean, it's kind of odd how these monsters just coexist. I mean, you see a lot of bokoblins riding horses and even bears. Like, how did that happen? I would have loved to see something leading up to that point, you know? Now, this is pretty high up in my wants for the game, but it doesn't have to be as elaborate as what I just said. I just don't want the animals, the wildlife, the wild in Breath of the Wild to feel stagnant. Like I said, some of these animals literally just exist. And another way to combat this issue is to make the drops different. I mean, come on, I'm killing a deer and it gives me the same exact item as killing a wolf? That's unbelievable. And maybe if they don't do what I just mentioned at the bare minimum, they can provide us with different drops so that these different animals would have, obviously, 
different purposes mixed in with the crafting system that I was talking about earlier in this video. I mean, imagine killing a rhino, getting a rhino horn and applying that to strengthen one of your weapons. I mean, that would be kind of cool. But if I can summarize my entire point, I do not want the animals, the wildlife in Breath of the Wild to feel as stagnant as it did in the first game. I mean, it cannot happen again. And before we get off the topic of animals, I think that we just need to stress one more thing. Everything should be rideable, you know? When we look at Breath of the Wild, it's like, oh yeah, they let us ride bears, they let us ride deer, you know? But what was stopping them from allowing us to ride, you know, mooses or allowing us to ride rhinoceroses? Maybe mammoths or dolphins would be able to be rideable, you know? But let's hone in on this topic really quickly. If we are able to ride different animals or every animal, like I suggested, I think that there should be strengths and weaknesses to riding certain animals. Horses are, of course, standard. Riding things like camels would allow you to go places where you couldn't previously in the sand and then rhinos allowing you to power through the snow. And of course, dolphins would allow for underwater traversal at a faster rate. Now let's talk about cooking. So obviously, cooking was a major part of Breath of the Wild. So we'd want to see new recipes, you know, as well as new foods. I definitely think that's a no-brainer. However, I do think that there should be a cookbook which reveals a recipe as it's made. And also, Link should be able to journal the different recipes that he sees in different towns and villages. I also think that there needs to be a differentiation between elixirs and actual meals. Now, I feel like meals should, you know, give you a lot of hearts and more specific boosts, not abilities like defense up, attack up, or stealth up, but boosts like we saw in Age of Calamity, such as Flurry Rush Window up 10%. I feel like meals should recover more hearts while elixirs recover less hearts and gives you that special ability such as stealth up, attack up, defense up, things like that. Another way to make meals, you know, not stand as a health regeneration spam utility is to have the hearts recover over a small period of time and then that recovery ends whenever Link gets hit. Now I want to get into the controls. Now I know that Nintendo wants you to sit and take in the world and whatnot, but very fast sensitivity in this game is very slow. I just need it to be maybe 50% faster, you know, not crazy uh, BO2 trick shotting sensitivity fast. However, it, it's extremely slow. I also want healing to be a little more seamless, you know, going into the menu and selecting your armor or your food, you know, is a little disengaging. I prefer it to be like the rune abilities coming up on like a pop-up slide menu, you know what I'm saying? Maybe if we hold down ZR and then one of the D-pad buttons, one of these menus will come up. Now let's talk about enemies. So Breath of the Wild had a decent number of enemies in the game, uh, somewhere close to 80, but if you actually narrow down the enemies that aren't variations off of one another or enemies that have different AI or act in a different way. The number of enemies is in the teens, you know what I'm saying? Which just goes to show how many variations of enemies there are in Breath of the Wild. So instead of like variations off of enemies, we want to see about 80 or so different kinds of enemies with different AI. Now that might seem like a lot, but let's start off with this, number one. I mean, there are just so many returns enemies that would be perfect for this world of Hyrule. These include the land molas, which can be found underground, and I think that these are already confirmed for Breath of the Wild 2, as we've seen in the trailer, so that might be it. Tektites, Skulchulas, Dekubabas, Phoenixes, flying around Elden, Moldarks, Viruses, maybe those will appear in, you know, an Elden dungeon or whatever we're getting. In Argarok, in Aerolfos, I mean, that's literally a Lazelfos with wings. Kargaroks, Dodongos, I mean, the list could continue as well. New enemies could be a uh, Stalnol, which is literally like the skeleton version of a Lionel. I detail that in a past video of mine, so go ahead and check that out. I also want to see the return of Sky. 
Skylog. And I think that they have a high likelihood of returning because a lot of what we're going to be doing is way up now into the sky, way above Hyrule. Ganondorf, like Redead, should also appear and be littered throughout Hyrule Castle. And then some sort of knights or, I mean, as we saw in Age of Calamity, just some sword-to-sword -sword combat. Maybe Dark Link or like the Malice version of the champion, something of that sort. Some sort of sword combat would be great. I'm going to make a completely separate video on how I want these new enemies slash monsters to interact with the world around them and with the other creatures in the game. But for now, let's talk about expanding the gameplay potential in multiple areas. Aside from Red Dead Redemption 2, Breath of the Wild probably had the most attention to detail in any video game. However, there were some slight things that were somehow overlooked. This includes different weapons in the same category having the exact same sound effect, although they have different properties. The same can kind of be said for the armor, like metal armor and or something like the rubber armor or the stealth armor being not made of metal, you know, had different sound effects, although they did produce the same level of noise. If Nintendo takes that into consideration for the next game, it makes gameplay even more impressive than it already is. Now, Breath of the Wild had about 300 or so different weapons, okay? And the reason why they were able to make so many different weapons with ease is because they're literally just reskins of one another with slightly different damage outputs. I mean, sure, there are some subsets of weapons that could do different things like multi-shot bows and metal weapons acted differently than, you know, the wooden weapons and then there's elemental weapons. But for the most part, most weapons could fit into one particular category. And then the difference within those weapons in the same category is the damage output and the reskins. And because of that fact, I don't want to see any of the same weapons again in Breath of the Wild 2. And I know this might seem like we're getting spoiled here, but I mean, it's really not that high of an ask because all you're doing is remodeling things that already exist in the game. Now, of course, like enemy specific items like Lionel swords or but Coblin bows, they can still be in the game. Obviously, they can have the same name, but you know, a different design, you know? And honestly, if they don't do this, it's gonna feel really redundant because we're already getting the same world, which isn't a problem as long as you shake up the gameplay experience heavily. And I think having completely new weapons with completely new designs would help play into that. Back to what I was talking about earlier with shopkeepers or vendors selling items that aren't found anywhere else in the land of Hyrule. I mean, maybe some returning weapons can be found within these stores. Now let's talk about weapon functionalities. Now in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, there are three kinds of weapon functionalities, meaning every single weapon in the same category basically serves the same functionality aside from elemental weapons. Maybe certain weapons in the same class are more useful with a certain kind of enemies than other weapons, such as a Moonlight Scimitar being able to take down the Lizalfos more efficiently than, let's say, a Royal Broadsword. But a Royal Broadsword can be more efficient in taking down a Moblin than a normal Knight's Sword. What if the Knight's Shield allowed you to have a higher dodge window than any other shield, or the Hylian Shield allowed you to have a higher parry window than any other shield? All of these things may mixed with the different combat animations and the new durability system would completely revamp the system that we have in Breath of the Wild. It would make the returning Hyrule feel brand new all over again. Other than attempting to climb a rocky surface when it's raining, I think the most annoying thing in Breath of the Wild is opening a chest just to find out that it contains something that you already have the maximum amount of. And then the chest closes, but let's say you wanted the item in the chest. Now you have to go all the way back into the menu, find out whichever item you don't want or need the least, drop it, open the chest again, watch the animation play all over again, just to pick up this one item. This can easily be solved with three words. Swap equipped item. Instead of telling me that I can't carry any more of those items when I have a royal broadsword equipped and I just killed a Lionel and I want the stronger Lionel sword, just literally let me press A and pick it up. And let's say if I did do it by accident, well, there's my royal broadsword on the ground ready for me to swap with the Lionel sword that I for some reason picked up by accident. Oh yeah, and about opening chests, bro, keep me curious, Nintendo. I don't want to open a 
chest and see a damn opal every time I come across a chest. I don't know about you guys, but eerily close to the Great Plateau, there are some enemy camps that are diversified, that require different trains of thought when approaching, you know what I'm saying? I just wish that, you know, maybe every enemy camp was diversified in that aspect. And yeah, sure, there are different monster camps or enemy camps found throughout Hyrule, but nothing substantial enough to make you change how you approach it. And I mean, we see the Stone Talus as an enemy camp, so hopefully there'll be more things like that. Maybe a Maldugo will have the same kind of thing. I also think you should be able to do new things like heat up your metal weapons so that the first few hits gives like a heated fire attack which can be used for updrafts or just a fiery attack, you know what I'm saying? And finally, I do want to see more lively towns because in older Zelda games, all of the villages and towns were a lot more lively than the ones found in Breath of the Wild. I think Gerudo Town was the most lively and I mean, that's not saying much. All towns have like an inn, a general store, and then an armor shop. And then like once you get further and further into the game, there's literally no reason for you to visit these places ever again. What if we can economically fortify each and every single village in the game, adding in new features, bringing in people that can provide different services? I mean, if we do that for each and every single village or town, I mean, you're gonna want to go back there and see what's going on, you know? This can include specific weapons or exclusive weapons, exclusive items like food items or even meals. And like I was talking about earlier, clothing items, I mean, that would literally be essential. I also like how Hatino Village gave you the one service that allowed you to dye your clothing and then Gerudo Village or Gerudo Town, my bad allowed you to get exclusive pieces of headgear, you know? Every town has to have something, and if we are involved in that process, it would feel even more interpersonal. Because right now, when I'm visiting a town, I just feel like Yenobo. And for the final part of this video, I want to get into natural disasters, okay? Now, we saw a little bit of this, like when you go off into the edge of the maps, there's a very, very strong wind that will push you back in the direction towards the map. I think especially because we are going up into the skies, I think that, you know, windstorms would be completely necessary. It would force us to shake up the gameplay, and especially because there are patents confirming that we are gonna have different aerial maneuvers, you know, that just means that aerial gameplay is gonna be essential. I also wanna see the sand be utilized in some capacity. You know, quicksand would be really cool Cool, and it can open up a whole bunch of doorways for new enemies, new gameplay, things in dungeons and whatnot. I also think meteor storms will be really cool, sort of how we saw with Von Naboris. And then of course blizzards, so that when we're traversing Hebra or the Gerudo Highlands, it's not just snow. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me on this video, but don't worry, I will be diving deeper into different components of this video that I brought up, you know. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you find yourself watching my videos consistently, and I will catch you guys on the next one.